What's up, everybody? This is the Chasing the Tide Saltwater segment for Power Fin Podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Nichols. So come along for the Saltwater Shenanigans. All right, hey, hey everybody, Dustin Nichols with uh, Chasing the Tide Saltwater segment here on the Power and Fin Network. Um, we're excited to get this uh, series going here. This is my first episode. Um, I'm looking forward to starting a, a, a long run on this this podcast network, and uh, we're going to get this going with our first guest we have here um, from Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, the one and only Chris Castro. Yay. What's up? <laughs> going on, What's guys? What's up, my brother? Yes, yeah, oh, sir. Not much. Just here looking for the same fish you're looking for, man. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> like I said, you know, we chat a little bit before we started recording, and um, you know, I'm smacking myself for not fishing today. You know, I think you said you had a chance to get on the water a little bit, but I uh, got run off from some from weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's here, man. We got that first front pushing, or not first, but first real big front, I think. Because I think what is it supposed to dip down in the 40s this week or this weekend? Yeah, I'm gonna see 30s up here in my area. You know, I'm just <laughs> a little so- further north than you. Yeah, it's gonna be like 32 uh tuesday morning and i'm like oh come on bring bring them for it, man. bring bring them to that deep structure you know we'll we'll, we'll deal we'll dive into that in a little bit here in a second but yeah um you know what i want to do you know the way i want to start out is i, I just you know want to get your basic background tell us a little bit about yourself how you started fishing um what got yeah. you into fishing yeah yeah man so uh i moved around as a kid a lot um my parents had me <laughs> when they were going to college and as soon as they so i was actually born here in corpus but i yeah. only lived uh oh, i don't know maybe three or four years of age and then my parents graduated and we started traveling all over the world my dad got an engineering job and so i sort of like hopped around and fished right so i as a yeah. as a young young guy I, I can remember being on the the t-heads downtown in corpus uh parents graduated then we moved to sugar Lamb. And we were getting a house built, and I remember just sort of seeing all those little lakes and ponds. Actually, I'll tell you exactly. Oh the yeah, first I know exactly time what you're talking about. <laughs> I okay, so there's a. I grew up watching goldfish, <laughs> and um, I, I always wanted to try and catch them at such a young age. You know, just as a kid, just out of curiosity, because my my parents when they graduated, they moved to this place called the Lion's Head in Sugarland off Highway Six. And uh, the Lion's Head was this apartment complex with all these real cool canals and just it was stocked with goldfish. So I always go back to that. That's when I first really like, wow, I want a rod. I want to put something on this rod and I want to make sure and catch one of those goldfish. Never did. But that's just sort of how it all started. And uh, then I moved to Spain, man. And I lived there for about two and a half, almost three years and learned a little bit from from some of the guys there. That was I was about um, going into like fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So you know, some time had passed, obviously, in between Sugarland and then. But I just remember that being just a big turning point for me. Just the the species were different, everything was different. But the group of friends I met there loved to fish, and we used to fish in this uh, city. It was a port city called Gijon Asturi- Asturias or Asturias. Oh. I should use my accent, right? Um, oh yeah. So it's uh, basically northern Spain, looking out towards, uh, you know, like the UK and all that. Um, yeah. And, uh, man, it's just, it was it was cool to see that, you know. That's when I first saw big tidal fluctuations. Yes. It, it was crazy. I mean, it, nothing like we see here in Texas. I mean, you're talking about, oh, I don't know. Yeah, over there it's 15 eight or 20, 20. Yeah, 8 so to, eight it'd be to 15, 10, yeah. 15. Yeah. I mean, it just really depends on the time of year I noticed, but back then I really never focused on yeah. too much of that. It was just like, wow, like this could be dangerous. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> and so, um, then I came back to the U S. Um, I remember renting a lot of VHS tapes out of the local library in Rosenberg, which is just South of Houston. Yes. Um, they have a, a library there called, I think it's called the George ranch library. I think I could be wrong. Um, and I remember just learning so much from those tapes because that's all we had back then, yes. right? I mean, this is before the internet really took off. You know, it's it was just a different world. But that's sort of how I got started, man. And then, and then I got into kayak fishing. Uh, I bought a kayak, and I think it was 2009 mm-hmm. for like 300 bucks. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I did everything wrong, you know, really did. Uh, you know, I have sympathy for some of these guys who just get into the industry 
and they break all the rules. You know, they don't think about the life jacket. They don't think about right. the anchor, the leash, because, you know, going back, I was one of those dudes. I just, I was like, oh, dude, you know, I'm so excited. I was and, too. Uh, I, I take this kayak out and then I, you know, years later and they go by, I get scolded by some of the old salts and, and yes. some of the pioneers of the sport. And, uh, and now I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, that's, but, you know, that's I have more sport, you know? Yeah. That, that's, that's the whole thing is just jumping, jumping into something. You don't realize, man, you're such in a more confined space. Um, you have to have stuff there readily accessible. Say if you were to get a hook in your leg, you got to have some die cuts right there, boom, so you can clip it out and pull it through or whatever. You know, just different things like that that uh, a newbie might not know. You know, that's cool that you brought that up, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's just that, that's what that, and it, you know, and in a weird way, that's what kind of got me because you know I'm used to bank fishing, I'm used to pier fishing my entire life, but then when I got on a kayak, it was like, dude, my brain was firing in all these different directions. You know, I'm fighting a fish. You know, some you know, eventually down the line. And it's my first redfish, and I remember this like it was yesterday. And I'm just like, I'm the wind is picking up, like you know. And so your adrenaline starts to pick up because you're like, well, how do I bring this fish in when I'm drifting back? The fish is going that, you know, out that way. I, I have no I, drag is different. Yeah. Everything's different. And so um, I, I kind of like, I don't know, man. That all those brain snaps going on, man. It just really got to me. I was like, all right, this is completely different than anything I've ever done in my life. And uh, I just fell in love with the sport and I just kind of wanted to learn how to hone all those skills in, you know, just to be more efficient and just not look like I'm uh, fishing for the first time in my life. <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, yeah, so. Man, I know it just it opened up so many more opportunities on the water. I mean, because just like like I said, uh, I said I was on a guest on a, one of the OG shows for the Pal and Finn Network there. And, uh, you know, we, we dived into a little bit and I just said, you know, Texas is big because it is big. The fishing industry is just huge, but you know, you can, you can walk up to places and wade in. That was a big thing that you can just wade fish here. Cause that mm -hmm. growing up me, I grew up in Southeast Georgia, which was major marsh, uh, influx, uh, you know, six, seven foot tidal swings, the same thing. You really didn't, couldn't wade anywhere cause you were going to sink up to your neck in mud. <laughs> wow. So, so that's, Georgia that's has the whole thing. Georgia has swings? a big tide swing wow. too. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, wow, just like uh, the further further north you go up from Florida, yeah, it gets some pretty good ones on the Atlantic side. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're not waiting Crazy. over there. Yeah, but um, man, that's 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 cool, man. You, you know, get started, and then you've been fishing since uh, out of a kayak since 2009. Um, mm -hmm. So man, that's three that's years. A, that's a good stretch. Before I really, yeah, I mean, 2009. Um, and it was funny, man. I, I'm thinking back to those days, and there was really nobody doing it like they do it now, you know? I mean, any day you go out in Corpus, doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, there's going to be somebody out in a kayak. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Now, and back then, I just remember, um, they're just, uh, it was different, man. You know, it was definitely, the <laughs> the population wasn't quite there yet. Or the boom, I should say, wasn't there. Right. But it was getting there. It was getting it there. It was getting it was getting there for sure. And I, I picked it up, you know, what really made me go after a kayak. Um, the backstory to that is I started reading, you know, these magazines and these books that, that I would just randomly see hit the shelves uh, of these East Coasters, these guys up in Virginia, man. The guys that really got me into it uh, were it was Kayak Kevin and Rob Choi, which, by the way, that's kind of full swing circle here, like almost, I don't know, eight years later. Uh, that's actually his work. So one of the guys who I saw on that's a video, cool. and and he, he used to write for Kayak. Oh, yeah, I think he still does Kayak Angler Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up just kind of touching bases with him. He doesn't even know that he's one of the one one of the guys that kind of inspired me to do it. But I purchased some of his work just because uh, I just wanted a piece of that. You know, he does really good. Uh, how do you say that? I think it's uh, Jinatsu or Gimakatsu work or something like that. Yeah. so yeah yeah don't quote yeah, me on that really cool. <laughs> yeah the fish the fish print <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah japanese fish print <laughs> there you uh, go i think yeah i know uh there, there's a guy that was here for a while um greg blanchard he's a big youtube guy you know a big big time guy on youtube a solid solid angler bass side and uh he he does some shirts like that he's having a guy up from from austin doing some shirts with that 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 kind of print is really really cool um, oh that's cool man yeah I, what's his name uh greg blanchard 
He's Greg the uh, Blanchard. Okay. He's a big, big YouTube bass fisherman tournaments, and he's originally from New York State. He travels around doing like physical therapy and stuff. But he lived in Texas for a while. Um, I think he's out in California now. But he he's he's got a guy that does some really cool prints like that too. And I, man, I'd love to do, get some, you know, some uh, when I catch that over thirty speck of trout. <laughs> That'd be I'd good. Like to get, I'd that like to like to get one done of that. Give it, put a nice yellow eye on it, and you know, yeah, have it look really cool. Do a little print and stretch it out over a canvas and have it hanging up. You know, so <laughs> you know. That's the only thing about it, though. You got to keep the fish to print it. Which yeah. if I catch if I catch one that big, this is going back in the water. You know, <laughs> same thing. So that's what want to get me to this topic. I just wanted to um, dive into uh, uh, some of your favorite species you like to target. Um, out of yeah, the man. So, so that's that's an interesting one. You know, um, I like to target a lot of different species but you know i guess the main one the main ones in texas obviously you're inshore and offshore they're night and day but uh let's start off yeah. with inshore so um redfish obviously and, and you know speaking of redfish i'm surprised I, I didn't realize how sought after redfish was to somebody who lives outside of the u.s yes. um i i just learned this like a few years ago when marty from birdley pro came down and, and he was down here fishing and he was like, "No, I, I don't want. I don't want a kingfish. I don't want this big old fish right here. I just want a redfish." I was like, "All right." Yeah. So uh, redfish right. is on the list, man. Speckled trout, of course, dude. I mean, we're just blessed to be in a good area yes, where we are. some of the the big <laughs> speckled trout like to hang. Um, what else, man? Uh, I haven't caught a tarpon, but it's it's. I've been targeting them. I've had a few opportunities with them, uh, but I haven't actually landed an official date per se. Well, um, we, we need to make that happen. We need, we need to get together and make us a trip down to Port Isabel yeah. and go, go chase them and actually go after some snook too. So that's what I'll, yeah. you know, I, I'd be yeah. down for that kind of trip, you know, definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> I see them all the time right here. And even in, I've seen them in Port Isabel. I've seen them in, you know, Mansfield jetties, Port Aransas. I mean, they they're there and the guys on the fly are catching those like crazy, but yeah, that's definitely yeah. on the list. Um, believe it or not, Kind of whipping back to inshore black drum. I I really enjoy actually oh. catching black drum, dude. Uh, the big old nasties. Not the you know. I mean, yeah, you'll run into a butterfly drum every so often, but to catch those yeah. big, huge, yeah, the ones nasties, that are man, they're kind 30, of fun. Thirty four yeah. inches plus. You know, they yeah. Uh, if you can get them to eat artificial, that's great. Uh, I've had a couple like that out of the kayak, and they you're definitely on a what they call a Texas sleigh ride. <laughs> yeah, man, those are yeah. those are a lot of fun. Really, really a lot of fun. Oh, they are. Uh, and then going back to uh, to offshore, man, of course, you know, kingfish, we're sort of right in that mi migratory pattern whenever yes. they go back down to Mexico, the Yucatan, and they whip back up north. Um, so we're, you know, and they come in close. A lot yes. of that is, of course, because of inshore structure and whatnot. So it brings in some of those species in. Um, I I've seen mahi come in as, yeah. as close as two miles. Um you know, cobia is a big, a big one, you know, and if you're lucky enough, of course, the selfish, you know, they're out there more than what people think. And people do catch them. It's rare, but they do catch them. Uh, well, well we, that's, can, we can go ahead and, uh, and, <laughs> and just let everybody know that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Chris has uh, landed uh, a <laughs> yeah. selfish was, on his kayak. Yeah, fortune. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was, that was a crazy story. I guess we can get into that one later. Yeah. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll dive into that later here a little bit. <laughs> What else, man? Um, what's a good one? Snook. I think you already said that. I haven't yeah. put my hands on a snook yet, but I've been next to a guy. I took a dude out one time, man, and he caught a snook. And I was like, dude, you're you're so lucky, man. I brought my yeah. camera and everything. And he was like, no way. You brought your camera. I was like, yeah, let's get a picture of this and that. Yeah. Took about five yeah. shots. I go to the truck, and I was like, man, you're going to kill me. He's like, why? He's like, I, I didn't put an SD card in the camera. I don't have a card in there. <laughs> So oh, it's our little like uh, uh, it's our little story, man, that we kind of share the the story that you know we can never prove, but between me and him, he actually got one. Uh, but yeah, we caught some snook here, but I've like I said, I've never personally caught one yet. Uh, but I'd like yeah. to get my hands on that. So yeah, man, those are some of the species down here that I enjoy. Cool, looking or hoping, man. looking and hoping. I know yeah. uh, it's like I'm trout fever like 100 percent right now. The uh, the cooler weather, the front's pushing in, you know, and then big girls come out to play. You know, it's like, man, I'm 
that's all I'm about right now. I was having yeah, fun man. catching redfish for about the last month, and then it just it's it's turned off. It's done. I yeah. flip the page to trout now. You know. Um, yeah, trout can they can ruin you, man. Yeah, they can they can change you. Um, they changed me re- real recent, like three about three or four years ago. Um, because I never really was avidly chasing or trying to target trout until, I mean, I would catch them, you know, I've caught them throughout my life, but to really actually try and figure them out, you know, I only got like four years in on it and, um, not until the last couple of years, I finally did enough work to where it's like, okay, I have picked up on their pattern. I've mm-hmm. felt consistency, but there's nothing better man than putting in all that work and failing more than succeeding. And then you finally get that big slob gator trout and you're just like, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> finally, yes. you know, so, well, what's even what I, better when you, when you get, get one and then you get one on the next cast <laughs> <laughs> when you find them like that. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I've gotten that's... a lot of 25s like that. Yes. Right there in the yes. middle of 25, like the 25 inch mark. I've, I've, I don't know why, but, Whenever I catch one, I'll try and bring it in, cast as quickly as I can, and sure enough, man, they're there. They're yeah, hanging no, around each other. Those 24, 25 inch are, are usually, yeah, there's one one or more normally there. And then um, I've noticed some of them that, uh, like 26, 27, I've had pulled out of back of a school of redfish, you know, a mm-hmm. solo one, just yeah. right behind the redfish, hanging out or or – or underneath a school of horse mullet mm-hmm. and just have one crash my top water right on the backside of a school of mullet. Like he was just shadowing them the whole way. You know, it's really, it's really cool to see that kind of stuff and then apply it again at different times. And it's in it and it works. It's like, I got one for you. Have crazy. you ever, have you ever caught a, a trout that was hanging behind your partner stringer? <laughs> Uh, have, you, have you read into that? Like, no. Your partner's got a stringer of trout, and there's so happens to be a loose trout hanging behind with and the you rest throw of the back trout. back there to it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I've done that once. Done that once wow. about three years ago, man. And uh, that was fun. It was like a 23. I mean, it wasn't a big one, but, you know. No, I mean, that's pretty big for – depends on where you're from. But good solid 23-inch trout did that. It was hanging around. I, I kept seeing – something swimming around his uh, stringer. And I was like, dude, there's a fish hanging behind your 10 foot stringer. And I uh, cast it out and uh, yeah, I caught one like that. I'll never forget that. Yeah. And for, for, <laughs> for those of you landlocked people out there in this uh, podcast land, uh, we do have sharks that kind of frequent the bays and are known to uh, pull your fish off the stringer. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's what he was like. Oh, a fish back there. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> oh, that's that's cool that there's a there's another trout back there just hanging out chilling. You know, <laughs> I, I've never I haven't heard that one before. That's a good one. Definitely. A yeah, good one. yeah. I did that one and, yeah. and I was like, that was fun. That was just made for a good story. Right. Oh yeah, it does. Well, cool, man. Uh, well, I just want to know. I see you got the ACK. Um, logo on your shirt so you are a member of the austin canoe and kayak fishing team there yeah and, uh, man i just uh completed my first year with them actually so excited to be a part of them and what they're doing they just launched their uh fishing team last year last so year. Yes. Uh, yeah which i was surprised you know because ack is a pretty big company I didn't, I didn't i never even like i always thought that they had uh, a fishing team but what it was is they've always had a hobie fishing team and not yeah. An actual kayak fishing team. So super excited to be a part um, of that and what's going on. So it's been really, really neat. Cool deal. And then, uh, what kayaks are you currently um, fishing out of right now? So, so when I got on. with, um, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, versatile fishing. So, you know, here in Corpus, I'm inshore and offshore. And um, before I got with ACK, I was with, on a Trident 15. <clears throat> um, I stuck with that kayak because for the type of environment that we're in, it's just a good versatile boat that can help me go offshore and inshore. But, of course, being now with them, um, I had never – I've tried a few pedal systems, but I never committed to one. And so um, I heard a lot about the Predator PDL, and I, I gave that a shot, and I, I enjoyed it, man. I re- oh, really enjoyed yeah. it. yeah. Yeah, so that, those, that's kind of my uh, one-two punch right there to help me get where I need to down here in Texas. Uh, Ocean Trident 15, if the conditions are gnarly offshore or if I just yes. feel like 
going for a good paddle inshore. Um, and the old town predator PDL. So, yes, I still love, uh, the soul of paddling. Um, that's mm-hmm. true kayaking to me. Is yeah. Paddling. And, and I enjoy a good paddle through the marsh chasing redfish, you know, uh, close to the action stealth. Um, you can slide in some tight areas that boats can't get in. You're not worried about that drive and that heavier boat that you have with a pedal drive. So, you know, a mm-hmm. little bit of ease of access and launchability, launchability, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, yeah, I'm the same way. It makes it's, it cool, it's, you know? it's different, you know, like I'm glad I got to experience a lot of paddling and I still do. I paddle yes. a lot. Uh, the only reason this year that I hadn't was I had a little strain on my lower back. So I'm letting that kind of heal, but, yes. um, there is something different about it. You know, it's like when, when guys tell me, well, why do you paddle more than you pedal? I mean, obviously not this year, but last year. And, um, I was like, well, it's the struggle is a little bit different, you know, and sometimes it, that feels a little bit more rewarding. So I, I still yes. do enjoy all the close combat fishing, the, the, the organized chaos, you know, like, Especially that, when you get on exactly. a big fish, you know, it's that's just a, good it's a different fight. Of it. It's a very yes. different fight yes. whenever you have a paddle and a rod in hand and a pedal yes. drive and a rod in hand. It's just two different animals. Uh, but, I, you know, I enjoy it either way. Either way, man. So, And yeah. you you like to use a paddle kayak for offshore also. I do, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah and, which and is the Trident 15. The, the Trident 15. That's a great Correct. paddle boat. Yes. Yeah, it's it handle, a good handles good the surf kayak. well. Yes. It does. Yeah, it handles the surf well. Um, you know, I, I was concerned at first, but I gave it a shot because uh, I was so used to paddling a lighter style kayak in the 70 pound mark. And the Trident 15 is a heavy kayak, man. It's it's like 95 ish, 98 yeah. pounds once you put the rudder. But what I learned from that was I actually begin to appreciate the weight a little bit better because of once you get that momentum going, it tends to push through the surf just yes. a little more, man. And not only that, but whenever the wind is kicking, you know, it doesn't get bullied around as much. Um, right. And and for the longest time, man, going back to the guys who got me into kayak fishing, uh, kayak Kevin. If any of you guys have ever heard him, he's just one of the one of the founding fathers down there, up there in the East Coast in the Virginia. Um, he always talks about, no, nah, I don't want to like kayak. You know, I want to. Yeah. I like those big, heavy kayaks. I was like, wow, that doesn't make any sense to me. But now I know. You know, now I know and have an appreciation for something that's well built, has a good hole design, yes. and can yep. push through uh, water. The, although it's heavy, you know, but it still handles just as good once you're on the water. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. That is the kayak that I use for mainly offshore. Offshore. Yep. Yeah. And that would be me. I would be in a, a Kraken 15. Uh, the Kraken another, 15? I mean, you know what? Another, I've another, another great, another great boat. Yes. Yeah, another great uh, offshore boat. Yes, punches through, uh, nice and sleek, paddles well. You know, same thing. It's just I know the Trident. It's a great boat, also. So yeah, not well. Yes. So you guys have that nice seat though. Ah, uh, yeah, it is a little little different seat. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> well, cool, cool, man. man. Um, so what would you tell everybody out there that uh, <laughs> say has never? offshore fish from a kayak what what would be some of the accessories that you would suggest that are absolutely a must-have um when you're going to target those offshore species uh king mackerel or 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 deep jigging for snapper or something like that what are some accessories on that boat you're going to have with you that are just a must-have yeah so i always tell guys you know simplicity is your your best friend man Um, whenever you're considering going into the open water considering offshore kayak fishing and you're fighting big game um you know go, go into it with a lot of respect don't overload yourself if that means just going with one rod you know two rods then then do it you know i always highly recommend that just go very simple um there are a few things i would say definitely have your leashes in place always your security checks first you know so your uh, pfd if, if you guys are new to kayak fishing, you're listening to that term. Uh, that's a short for just a life jacket. Yes. Uh, make sure you got something that's comfortable uh, that you feel like you can comfortably move around and shift around. You know, the evolution of, of PFDs has come a long way, so there shouldn't be any issue there. Um, right. Your VHF radio is sort of your last lifeline. 
and um, make sure it floats. Uh, obviously, make sure it's waterproof and always have it attached to you. You know, one of the whenever you're going out there and guys are approaching the offshore scene green, um, I always tell them <clears throat> always have it attached to you because the the problem with just having it on your kayak is I've seen guys, you know, flip out there and all of a sudden yes. they become detached from their kayak and they start doing this and they're reaching. They're like, oh, I can't call my buddy. You know, I don't have my cell phone on me. I don't have my VHF radio because I left mm-hmm. it attached to the kayak. So I always recommend having your your VHF radio attached to you. Um, your leashes are important, but just this is sort of like a side topic. Just be careful with leashes. Um, and this kind of fits into like fishing within your own means because I have ran into issues. I use Yak Gear leashes um, on my paddle. A lot of people give me beef for not using on my rods, but the only reason I don't use them on my rods, man, is because <clears throat> I've hit some nasty surf to where I become entangled whenever I'm coming back in, and yes. I can't uh, get back on my kayak. So, uh, you know, that's an issue. It's like, okay, so well, what does that mean, Chris? Does that mean you don't leash your rod, so I'm going to have to lose my rod when I flip? Well, uh, <laughs> it, it might mean that, but I would say just get a kayak that can – give you another alternative whether that that may mean le- or bunging it to the side yes you know flushed yes. on your kayak that might mean yep. utilizing some internal uh hole yes. capabilities like like the trident that i'm in right um just think about those things make sure you're you're running your rods flush um i don't know there's just i can go off on a tangent on this yeah i imagine <laughs> i imagine so i, I like uh, the yeah so let, let's break it real quick so yeah. your, your your pfd your vhf radio Definitely have a float plan, a partner. Um, you know, the term leash it or use it, or I'm sorry, leash it or lose it uh, is always in effect. But just yeah. be cautious with not overindulging and putting leashes everywhere, and especially if you're not comfortable in some gnarly surf. There, there, it, it could be that when you launch, it's perfect crystal clear conditions. But when you come back in, holy smokes, things have really turned up and ramped up. And yes. here I am turtled. Now I'm tied with leashes around my foot and I can't, you know re-enter you know and i've never practiced it enough those are just some of the things i've seen from other guys as i've built experience and have, that have also happened to me so just a couple of things that kind of right. keep in mind yeah and it's always a plus to to uh practice re-entry on some flat water first you know <clears throat> oh yeah. yeah yeah that's definitely a big plus to, to make sure you can get back into that that kayak and and have a way to bail that water out if you need be you know um absolutely that's, bilge a, that's, pump. A, yeah. that's another bilge that. pump or something that's a little self manual bilge pump or whatever um, but that, yeah, one of the main things, buddy system. I mean, I'm not going to go offshore by myself. I really, I mean, it's doable. Yes. But would it's a lot better when you have somebody with you. <laughs> yeah. Back, offshore, you know, the here. margin for error is a lot lesser. You know what I mean? Like yeah. offshore, yes. it's, it's a little different because you're out there and if you are in a state of emergency, yeah, I mean, you got to understand it, at least here where we're at in Texas, I mean, you're paddling at least two or three miles if not more. And, um, you know, you don't want to yes. have to make that call and pay a bill unless I think, I don't think you pay if your life is in threat, but let's just say you get a hook. I, I've had guys, uh, or I've known of guys get hooks stuck on their neck, you know, yes. and they just don't feel comfortable. They freak out and it's like, all right, well you can call the coast guard on that situation, but that right there will cost you because <laughs> yes. that's not technically a life safe, you know, threatening situation. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you just got to really, really think things through and reach out to anybody who has got some time on the water offshore, man, is what I would recommend. Pick their brain as much as you can. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. That's some solid info right there. Um, yeah, everybody out there, you know, pay attention to that because that's, that's definitely some, some good stuff. So, all right, man, uh, we'll move along. I got another little little question for you here we're going to talk about um what you feel um how our texas waters fishery compares to uh fishing in other areas have you have you kayak fished in, in, in on the gulf coast of florida or the atlantic coast of florida yeah yeah, yeah. so i've i've kayak fished down in mexico and mm-hmm. i've also kayak fished on the atlantic side um i've done extreme kayak fishing a few years and then I've also <clears throat> bass fished uh, in Mexico for a little bit. I don't know if that would classify as a comparison since we're not really talking oh, yeah. strictly bass. But, you know, I've been to that area. Um, cool. What I can compare it to is definitely Florida, the Atlantic side. 
Um, but man, Texas is Texas is different, dude. Um, I can't really speak yeah. in behalf of the West Coast. Just FYI, I've never been there. Uh, I never fished. Yeah, that's in different for sure over there. Calico bass, link cod, halibut, and different things like that. You know, um, uh, yeah. yellow, yellowtail, all that, and the kelp fields and all that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna dive into that. I hopefully I can get somebody from. We got a guy that spear fishes off of his over there. Um, wow, in California and has some pretty awesome stories about shark encounters and stuff. So I hope to look forward <clears throat> yeah. to get him on here one of these one of these episodes too. So yeah, I can't really dive into that uh california style over there right. you know something a little different but you say florida you know yeah florida uh, the, the gulf coast of florida i from my I, in this isn't first-hand experience but i've had a few uh, folks come from the gulf side of florida come up and um it's similar it, their water clarity seems to be a little bit yes. better on that side obviously but um it's similar like as far as the tactics um yes some of the tides the marsh um and especially uh, Louisiana. I feel like Louisiana and Texas are extremely similar as yes. far as water clarity. Yeah. I could be wrong, but you know. Um, so I, I think you know, I, as long as you don't have a big influx of tide, tidal yes. movement like they do where, where you said Georgia, right? Yeah, Georgia is where you're from. Yeah, um, I think it can compare to Louisiana, maybe yeah. a few areas down in the uh, Florida area on the Gulf so, side. So you're, uh, you fish some of the, um, extreme kayak fishing series there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so deep, deep jigging, speed jigging, uh, mm-hmm. or live bait. Um, so I mean, yeah. Um, live bait. I, I've only done the selfish smackdown. I was on this yeah, self- three okay. year journey, man, to land a selfish. And so I, you know, it's different from when you compare their summer slams to the uh, selfish smackdown. So I only have experience on the selfish smackdown, okay. which what does that mean? That basically means that uh, I was using live bait for everything. I didn't do any jigging or anything like that. Their rules are different. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to use either uh, gogs or pilchards, which we uh-huh. absolutely have none of that <laughs> yeah. in Texas, you know, or hard, we don't use hard, it. Hard tails. <laughs> yeah. <they're... laughs> yeah. Hard tails out the bazillion. Yeah. And you know, I was tempted. I was so tempted to bring a ribbon fish just to see what would happen yeah. down there in Florida, but oh yeah. I never did. It was too much, too much of a hassle. Their their fish uh what what their selfish target there are it's really just shit. different. Yeah, yeah, they really are. So well, you know, growing up in Georgia, the coastal fishery there, um when we would catch as they call them over here, ling cobia, uh mm. we would we would target them with live eels and just slaughter them. Yeah. Eels. So uh, what do I use? Uh, I use artificial eels, actually, to yes. target them here. There's Texas, a company yeah. called Ron's, R-O-N-Z, Ron's Lures, and they have a, a wiggle eel-looking lure, and they just absolutely slam them. They're bright, bright pink. <laughs> they just can't stand wow. the things. Yeah, they can't stand Have you anything. hooked up on a cobia before? Not on a kayak. Out of a no, boat but plenty you've seen of times. Them? Yeah, on a yeah. boat, I've caught plenty of them out of a boat. They're just, they're brutes, man. They're so strong. Yeah. They're a strong fish, you know. I, uh, um, and they're, I, I they're great table up fare, on too. Of, <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. No, they're delicious. <laughs> I, I hooked up on one of the biggest ones I personally ever have hooked up on. And this thing was huge, dude, this year. And um, I, I, I tell you what, like, <laughs> I had a guy from San Antonio kind of next to me, and he was just kind of witnessing it and watching the fight as it went on. And uh, the first thing he said was, dude, that's like what, what, what I just saw from that cobia is like a bass on steroids <laughs> yeah. because I've never seen a cobia. I've seen a lot of cobia landings, but uh, this particular fight that I had this year, its head came out just like a largemouth bass. Gills flared up and started <laughs> thrashing its head and it almost it almost breached on my kayak, man. I, it was the first Ooh. time I was literally scared of a fish like I mean, I was literally scared. Like, I was yeah. like, all right, I'm ready to we're, go home. We're talking, uh, <laughs> like, 50-pound uh, class cobia, maybe? I would 50. say about 40, 40. 40. I don't know if it was quite at 50. Um, but for me, I, I've never hit anything over 40. That's a 50-inch that's that's cobia. That's yeah. 50 inches, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bigger. That's a big cobia. Big old head. <laughs> I mean, had a big head like a, like a catfish, and it yeah. was just – looked like a shark – subsurface yeah. um and this thing was just ready to rock my world man so 
I ended up losing them to the rigs. But yeah, man, those things are crazy, crazy fish. Yeah, and we're lucky that we have those uh, that near shore structure here within you know two to four miles. We got those standpipes out there, and some of that structure, um, and that does uh, bring those fish in. They talk, you know, they they like to hang out. The bait hangs out. Um, so does, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty cool to to be able to we can t- target that stuff straight off the beach. And that's what's cool about Texas is that we have we have beach we can drive on, so we can go. Yeah. So over the years, people have found like some some rock piles and some different structures, some boat wrecks, you know, and you can target fish like that down to Penn's Padre Island National Seashore um, that you can drive all the way down to, from uh, Corpus Christi, uh, North Padre Island, and all the way down to Port Mansfield Jetties if you have a, the right vehicle at the right time of year. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, cool. that's a good comparison right there between Texas and Florida, um, you know, going to extreme and experiencing that. Yes. You've got to drag your kayak through fluffy sand for, oh, I don't know, two, three hundred yards. Whereas here in Texas, man, <laughs> back I, I never, water, yeah, buddy. like I, I thought this was pretty normal, you know, like, oh, driving on the beach. Oh, yeah, it's normal. Nah, it's not quite normal. We're, we're pretty blessed to have that capability, yeah. man. <laughs> There's still a couple places in Florida like Daytona and New Smyrna mm-hmm. Beach, New Smyrna Inlet, Ponce Inlet. They still can like access there. It's a big surf, surf towns, you know. A lot of surfers and stuff oh, really? too, but yeah, but it didn't like it's not like what we have here, you know, being able to drive what almost sixty plus miles down the beach and you know find fish in the surf and it's pretty pretty cool that we still have that available to us, you know. Yeah, man, Texas has a lot of near shore, offshore structure. Yes, a lot, and and that's yeah. what makes us a lot different from a lot of yeah. other areas. And despite a, our shallow shell, you know. And the and the sow snapper like they come in close in the winter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's so you know, that you hit on a good topic, man. I didn't realize I mean, I, I guess I've just always taken that for granted. Um some of these guys from Australia and New Zealand that come over and fish our waters, they freak out about that. Like they really do. They're just like, dude, how many people know about this area? <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, well, why why are y'all so concentrated on? He's like, no, we we you cannot. It is there's so much pressure on them. We'll blow um, up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they're just amazed that you can catch near shore quality snapper, man. Yeah. So, um, I guess you know I've gone out there, caught my limits of state snapper, and I just, I don't know, I, I never really put that much thought into it. But yeah, man, um, apparently there's not a lot of areas in in the U.S. where you can do that that shallow. Yeah, we're talking like a forty to sixty foot area, mm-hmm. I believe, is what you probably want to say. That's 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 what I had had found, you know, when I had done it. Um, you know, and, and yeah. that water, that water, that surf temp hits seventy and mid sixties. Boy, they they move in a little bit closer. You get find a little better fish in the state waters that time. Of, you know, yeah, time of year or when they when that temp drops like that. That's when it's sushi time. It's yep. sashimi. For days, yeah, I love I love snapper. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, great eating fish. Well, for cool sure. deal, man, man. Yeah, that's that's awesome getting to talk about that too. You know, because we we're, we're blessed here in Texas with the fishery we have. You know, so um, man, it's just I know some of your catches it it, it blow my mind. So yeah, we're gonna dive into this uh, and talk about um, certain fish you caught. It has a bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, here in the, our Texas waters, uh, you know, you landed a a pretty solid sailfish here. You know, yeah, uh, that was um, t- touch base on that. A, for me. Such a weird experience, man. Uh, a couple guys from San Antonio actually were there with me. Uh, Robert Rodriguez and Robert Moore. Um, <clears throat> that was just you know. I mean, it, it, it's funny because as soon as that was was caught, a lot of people started to come down that I noticed, and they wanted to target selfish. Well, you, it's that's yeah. tough. I, I did not target that selfish. I I don't know how that rumor had had gotten spread, but I I, did, well, I took advantage of a situation is how I explain it. So, yeah. and I don't even know if the situation was relevant to the selfish. I just saw stuff running underneath me and. I, I dropped a line there, and I think it was – I mean, it's just luck. You catch a selfish yeah. down here, it's just straight chance. Uh, it's a crab shoot, you know, or, or as some of the old salts like to say, um, yeah. it's well, a lottery even, pick, it, man. 
even out of know, a boat, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's. I was in thirty-four foot of water when I caught that thing. Wow. So that's that's just, and, and not only that, but it, you know, whenever we sort of tape measured it, not really tape measured it, but we kind of lined it up against the uh, stern and put the nose on the end of the ocean kayak uh, logo. You know, that was obviously just a ballpark figure, but that was a surprisingly big sail for that shallow. We averaged about 87, at least minimum 87 inches, um, which is just, uh, th that's unheard of for being that close. I think, yes. I think the record is like 100 something pounds, 93 inches, but you're talking about boats that are going way out into the Gulf of Mexico. Yes. Yes. You know, so it was, uh, that was just huge, like blessing. Just, I always say that fish picked me, dude. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Yeah. What, what you did know? you catch it on? What, uh, a live bait? So or you... it hit both. I, I had yeah. two, um, it can, I landed it on the, on the, uh, uh, ribbon fish, okay. but it knocked out. So whenever I'm fishing for this thing, I don't know if I put that in the video. There's, um, I have two lines out. <clears throat> I had a live bait, and I, I cannot tell you for the life of me the name of that bait, but it's it's got it's it's basically like a little reef fish that hangs around the rigs. Uh, it almost looks like uh, it almost looks like a baby jack, like it croaks, and yeah. I can't remember the dang uh -huh. name of it. But uh, it, it's got a like a yellow tail. Um, I used I had one of those just on a a short stock stinger rig, you know, basically just a J hook. Yes. And uh, one single stinger on the back, and then I had a ribbon fish. Well, it actually took the live bait first, and fought it for a little bit. I'm assuming that was the sailfish. You know, uh, it tore up the everything. It twisted everything. And then I stopped, did a few more uh, paddles and strokes, and then the uh, yeah, I did not ex escape the uh, the ribbon fish setup because yeah. that's an, a full on stinger rig with about three trebles. Three trebles, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and man. I fought it on that. I, I knew, you know what's crazy, dude? I don't know. I, I cannot explain this moment. I've never caught a sailfish, mm -hmm. but I knew I had a sailfish. <laughs> I, that, uh, I cannot explain that drag that. scream, that initial run when they slam that bait and they know they're got tension on them. They they yeah. scream. Yeah, it, it was just crazy, <laughs> man. The head shakes. It literally felt like if you've never caught a sailfish and you want to experience it. I would say go to those fishing expos and seriously play those yeah. games. Had I, I'm telling you right now, dude, had I never played those games, I would have never said on the radio, hey, Rock, dude, you, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I think I got a self. Because it felt just like those those games, man. Whenever it hit, you know, whenever it would thrash and move around, it literally felt like that thud. So I was like, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, if anybody wants to check it out, yeah, you you have a uh, – uh, you. It's out on YouTube, you know. There's some, some a video of it and everything. So you can go ahead and uh, yeah. yeah, plug that man. Plug plug next level fishing TV, man. Yeah, so I I do uh, I have a YouTube channel. I've had it for for a while. You know, it's sort of that's what YouTube and my passion for kayak fishing kind of blended at the same time. Uh, I just felt like, man, dude, there's so many stories you could tell on a kayak. You know, and this was before a lot of now. There's a lot of YouTubers now. You know, it, it was I think when I first got into it. It was myself, Ty Sutherland. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, I, I think that was the transition of when Jim Sammons started to release content. So did Chad Hoover, uh, Robert Field. I came in right the same year as him. You know, a handful uh, of other guys, I'm sure, in the East Coast that I, I yeah. can't yeah. remember. But um, I just, there wasn't a lot to look at. But the stuff that I did see back then, it inspired me to just go out there and represent some of the Texas waters and just to try and see if, um, I could help the sport grow. You know, it wasn't, it hadn't fully blown up to what it is now back then. Yes. And so I, I, yeah, you can catch, I'm sorry. I went off a tangent there, but, oh, um, it's all good, the selfish fast forward to present, uh, that, that selfish was, uh, documented. We, we I filmed everything on it. Thankfully, yeah. Um, and, uh, it's on, you can actually YouTube, uh, you could just put Texas selfish and it'll yes. come up. It'll come uh, up. You could, yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll see it there. Um, funny story of that dude is I had to delete all my GoPro previous footage to record that video. Oh. Cause I caught two barracudas that day. 
Oh, okay. Caught two barracudas, which is super. Wow, that's weird. The, 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 yeah, the, it was super rare. You know, and yes. I don't know if yes. any of this had to do with. Did, did the hurricane hit that year? Was it that year? I don't know. Was it two years ago when we had a. Uh, yes, Harvey. Yeah, it had to. Man, that was such a weird day. Harvey was 17. Yeah. I was catching barracudas on live bait. Couldn't get them to move for anything on artificial. They uh-huh. were just sitting there. Still. Yeah. They would just look at my stuff, move. Nope, don't want it. But as soon as I put something live on there, I actually had filmed two barracudas and then I caught the selfish after. And I was like, dude. I got to make a decision right now. Either I'm guessing that I do have a selfish and it's worth deleting barracuda yeah. footage. And yes. I just did, man. I went on a, just went on on a, a wing win. and a yeah. prayer, yeah. man. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, see, I, I, I've i seen, um, you know, some some charter boats and stuff like that out of South Padre. I, I've seen them with some cudas, you know, some barracudas down there. But up up here, I, I've never seen one in the water. And I have guy, yeah. I have friends that dive that dive the rigs and said they've never seen one up here, so that, that yeah, that's really, definitely something different. I've heard that they used to be real prevalent, um, and I've seen some small ones throughout the okay. years, but these that I caught that year were just abnormally big for I thought at least for that area, yeah. you know. So, but you know, I'll take the trade off <laughs> of that oh, day catching yeah. the selfish and not putting barracuda footage. We'll save that one for. <laughs> Maybe some other time. Oh yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, so yeah, looking ahead, man, you got uh, anything going on wrapping up this year, or, or looking on into twenty twenty? Uh, <clears throat> anything hot on the burner? Um, yeah, man. So I'm I'm really trying to do an actual thirty on a full. Like okay, so there's a lot I'm trying to do. All right, uh, I'm trying to film. You know, I feel okay. So let me break this down real quick. So I, going back to the YouTube thing, uh, it's a layered show. So I, I sort of have like A, B, and C content. So I, A content would be like a, a full drawn out target species episode. And then uh, your B content would be um, more like your behind the scenes, your filler. You can actually see all the effort that goes behind, you know, somebody actually going after a targeted species, yes. a trophy species. And then your C content, like your podcast and stuff like that. That's how, that's how that show is. So my goal moving forward is um, right now I'm, I'm trying to actually catch and, and with enough footage to make a 30-inch trout episode real. Yeah. You know, I've done it a couple times. I've only done it twice. But I, I was so focused in on just beating my own personal records. It just wasn't enough. And there's just some too much stuff that I'm showing on the back of the cameras where I just don't feel comfortable. You Where know, you're fishing, on. yeah, your, your background, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, got, I so, got some uh, for that too, man. So it's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> like, man, do I really want to, do I really want to share this? I, I don't know, um, because I fish some like some pretty crazy places, and it's like, man, there's yeah. fishing, there's there's trout like that in there. Yeah, uh, no, there's not. No, I'm not sharing anything. <laughs> I'm not sharing anything. Well, well, for last uh, last year, there, there's a there's a kayak page, San Antonio, um, uh. Yeah, kayak fishermen, San Antonio, Texas kayak fishermen, San Antonio, TKFSA. Yeah, they 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 did an online tournament last year, and and, and me and old Chris went head to head, you know, <laughs> and, and, and battled it out, you know, um, hey, for, all, for close, online man. trout we were, tournament. Yeah, we were first and second. Yeah. You, you edged me out by a couple inches. Um, yeah, was, man, it was it was good to go. I didn't sign up this year. I'm kind of bummed. I, I've taken a few people out and kind of helped them out a little bit, and got a got a couple people got some fish for them, and uh. This is but a different I, I time didn't of end. year, though, right? This is yeah. Uh, last, last year was, was it more February, winter? February. February. It was January, February, March. It was only supposed to go for two months, and went for three. So every, every, you know, Tracy, old, old Tracy Debman was hot on our heels, man. He was, he was coming, and so was Ernest Cisneros. Um, you know, yeah. that's a guy Ernest, that's down South area. Padre too. He, he's got a good one on the board this year, um, already. Like a, good. he's got a 26, 26 and a quarter. Um, yeah, that's really yeah, good. This, this is a little fun. early for my area. I mean, they're there. I've, I've got a couple over 25 already. Um, I've got, a, you know, quite a few in a 23, 24-inch range in the last few weeks. And uh, I'm still catching yeah. fish on top water. I'm still catching some fish on top water over here. So, What's y'all's uh, water temperatures like right now the over water there? Water temperature, well, I fished Monday morning. It was 62 where I was at, 63. Yeah. 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 It, it dropped after this last, that last front. We had, we had a real big drain. Because, you know, we mm-hmm. had had abnormally high tides for about two, three weeks. 
you know. Yeah. And, and uh, man, had them redfish acting stupid in the marsh, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm glad to be able to get back on the trout, you know. Uh, that's what I've been waiting on. <laughs> yeah, trout and, and good old reds, man. I need to bring you down here so you can target some of these shallow running uh, bull reds, man. It's so oh, crazy. Man. That's another one that I'm, I'm aiming to do this year. Cobia next year once the season starts back up. I'll be ready. Um, I'm trying to break my PB Kingfish, man. 57 and a half. Is, oh, man, that's a smoker, yeah, that's, bud. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing, man. That was uh, that was, that was different. When you look at it, a fish that big and you put it on your lap, like you Kayak just kind of bring it all in, man. It's, it's pretty pretty crazy. So yeah. there's oh, a few things man. left on the bucket list. I'd like to do also an Atlantic sale. Um, I yeah, still am, am wanting to do that. So I may have to holler at some of those guides over there and just say, you know what, dude? Yeah, Let's just what, seal deep, the deal. Deep blue ocean, deep blue uh, kayak. Deep blue, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Bri- Brian and- Nelly has, uh, does some stuff down there. I'm actually going to get him on the show um, in the next few weeks, hopefully. Uh, I spoke Brian to Nelly, yeah. Also, yeah. Yeah, Brian yeah, yeah. Nelly. Yeah, I'm going to get him on. He's he's out of Pompano Beach also. Um, yeah, he fishes man. down there. He's, he's got a – I think got a, I reached uh, out service. to Brian already. I told him, hey, dude, I, I want I, I definitely want an Atlantic sale. You know, I, I, well, something I want to go for. I know if you see those crazy ass videos that are out there now advertising that goat tournament, have you seen that, that junk out there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so that's in, that's in June out of Nevada, Florida. And there's apparently some kind of crazy artificial reef that was paid for after the oil spill and all that kind of stuff with that. Uh, really deal we had going on. There's a, apparently there's a, like a, a long reef structure they put like a mile and a half or two miles offshore that just runs like it's some kind of crazy structure they got out there some artificial reef that was put in and apparently that's where the tournament's going to be and if you see the crazy videos that are out there i know uh tracy debman i know some other people are talking about we need to make a texas freak texas road trip over there carpool <laughs> yeah so, man we need to over there because try to um, some habit. I- yeah, man, we got to put Texas on the board. That's, that's that's the fun I like about that tournament, man. Is just coming from and representing your home home state, you know. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I did it a couple times, and, and we sprung a leak, the Texas crew, and then second or third time with Eric, he placed and he got third, and yeah. it was like yes, you know that was cool. So yeah, yeah, we definitely got to put that on the list, man. Good group of yeah. us from Texas definitely need to go down there and uh, try and wreak havoc. Well, that's that's what we do on the bass side of things. I mean, there's a there's a group of us that that that, that travel around and fishing tournaments and stuff. And then there's some stuff going on. Uh, I know KBF. That's Chad Hoover's kayak bass fishing uh, national mm-hmm. championship. That's kind of like the spectacle of the kayak fishing industry or whatever, you know. Um, and uh, they they have that national championship on Gunnersville. I know there'll be a big group of us going over there. We need to do the same thing on the saltwater side. I know Tracy Deadman. I know um, what's the guy other guy on the Kobe team, Jason, uh, Eric, Eric Delois, Eric Delois, and yeah, um, yeah. yeah, Eric Delois, yeah, yeah, that's who I'm thinking of. I'm there's another guy that is on the fishing for bass, his name Jason Del Freeze or Del Freeze, mm. and uh, Eric, yeah, he's he's another solid, solid offshore inshore angler, also, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, we need we need to get us a crew over there, we need to get it, get it going, try to get something planned out, uh, for that. And uh, sure. looks like it's in June of, of next year, the, the goat tournament June of next year. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's 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 good to see more uh, tournaments popping up. I mean, I think it for the longest time it was just extreme, but well, their fishery true. is so amazing yeah, over uh, there. Like they have man, the room for it. I know. Well, we had that that deal that started up. It's the second year this year. They had the the Ray Del Mar. It was also it was put on by ACK, who you're on their team through Cats mm-hmm. and through uh, uh, Fin Factory. Uh, Mike Factory, Morales, yeah. who's a ho- ho- Hobie dealer there in uh, in Corpus Christi. Uh, your area yeah but yeah that's a really cool concept tournament too because you fish for uh redfish on one day with your uh best uh, uh two slot reds weight and then you fish offshore the next day or vice versa depending on the weather this year we had beautiful weather and i'm, I'm really uh upset at myself for not fishing the offshore tournament of that this year but uh yeah it was beautiful yeah, that yeah, day man you, it was you, uh you had a you had a solid fish and i um i think you were right there going to be in the money and then uh Something happened on the on the redfish. Um, yeah, I ran late. Some, I ran late. Yeah, me and uh, yeah, me and Ruben got caught chasing some reds, and we just we lost track of time, dude. You know, plain and hey, simple. It, it I mean, all I had to do was bring in one redfish. 
<laughs> oh yeah, and, yeah. You would take that was over overall uh, Ray Del Mar, King of the Salt. King big, the uh, salt. big lesson for sure. Yeah. You know, um, but I, I still. What did I? I can't. Did I get second? I think. I, yeah, I got second. Hang on. Where's that thing at? Got it here somewhere. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> let me see it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Right, that's the uh, yeah. that's the the kingfish, right? Yeah, yeah. That was that was the offshore division. It was. Um, uh, Eric, myself, and uh, Mark Garcia, man, Mark. which yeah. which are guys that I've all fished with. Good, good friends, good people, man, good people to be around, and just good characters. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got, so, I, uh, got I got, I got the, the the spot pot constellation prize for that tournament. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. I, I got lucky on that one, and and uh, I mean, we were on the fish. Uh, we we fished um over in my neck of the woods, so we had to like cut out early um to make it to weigh in and we had about a two hour period of thunderstorms that just dumped on us we were like huddled up underneath a, a cabin on the side of this bank <laughs> oh, <laughs> lightning damn. busting us up and we were on the fish I, I it was just one of them days you know you just you just have them sometimes you know it just yeah it it happens you know you know you run out of time you don't manage your time i've done that Quite a few times myself, I get all hyped up chasing fish, and then I was like, "Man, I really need to go." Well, no, I need to upgrade one more fish, and it's like, "Oh man, I just blew this." Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how right many tournaments here. I'm gonna do next year. I, I don't do a lot of them, but uh, I do. I try and pick the fun ones where yeah. it's like, "All right, you know, like I did. We did that boating offshore one, and I just the only reason I, I yes. just I knew the odds were against us, but I just wanted to try and spoil the party, and we just luckily did it." You did. You um, so little things like that, like, I'm just like, you know what? Yeah, let's try this one. Let's try and do this. <laughs> yeah, for those, so, uh, those of y'all out there in, in, in the internet land here, uh, Chris went out and, and smoked a boat tournament in his kayak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was smart. I think they were pretty, they were pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. You got to be by a was, guy in a kayak. It was, it was different, man. I, I, I never... Like I was doing it for ha ha giggles, yeah. but these guys, like, like you gotta understand, man, they're in million dollar offshore boats, and they did oh, yeah. not want to look at anybody on a plastic kayak. <laughs> so, got to look, all but, right. uh, no, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm, I'm gonna try and do about ten tournaments next year, maybe a little bit more. I might dip into the red fish scene a little bit more. Come on. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes, man. It's fun. I it's just, just man, it's just tough with the. With the, um, you know, bringing them back in live, you got to get them, put some G juice in there, and it's oh, man, it's just a hassle. I, I know um, uh, that artificial showdown that usually run out of Aranda's Pass was throwing around the idea of doing a, a a kayak division, and it's a four trout stringer. And I'm like, oh, my, really? eyeball, my eyeballs got big. <laughs> yeah, but man. I'm like, a live way in for trout is tough on a kayak because they don't stay alive on a stringer. Oh, well. dude. A so live? I was like, man, I was like, yeah, I said, you really couldn't do a live way in on, a, on for a trout tournament on a kayak because you're dragging them around. They're getting beat up. They're they're not going to like it. I was like, so That's don't. Tough. I, like, I, I really hope they were going to do that because I I was hoping to get some some interest in that, you know. And that's it. That's in December. Um, that would be really cool. Really? That's, yeah. What location? Yeah. The uh, all Texas waters are open, but you have to go to the way in 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 a Rancis Pass at Comp Brown Harbor. Hmm. So I know it's That's a big a boat. One. It's a big boat tournament, but they were kicking around the ideas of doing a kayak division, which was pretty cool. I wish you know, I w- I would love that. Uh, man, let me know yeah. if they uh, if they do allow kayaks, and maybe we'll do they allow. Is it a team event or what is this? Is it single individual? It's a uh, it's a team event. I think up to four four people in a boat. But man, I don't know if they'd let us fish as a as a group on on kayaks because I'd be down. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah man well if they do let me know <laughs> yeah we need to find out that. we need to i need to find that thread and get back on there and message and see what's going on yeah cool deal man um yeah we're gonna look at, at wrapping this segment up man i just want to see if you got anybody you want to thank uh sponsors family uh you know give a shout out to somebody uh here's your chance right now man go ahead yeah and, uh, well uh before it. my spot i'll thank you first um uh, thanks for inviting me on. Man. This is this is real cool. I, I uh, I don't. I don't I've joined. Know, it, yeah. I've done a couple podcasts. No, no, have I? No, I think this is the first podcast that I've actually been invited to. So it's an honor to be here, talk to you Ooh, about man. kayak fishing, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, oh, yeah. 
As far as uh, the sponsors, of course, you know, ACK, Yak Gear, Roblaza, Tsunami Tackle, man, those guys helped me do what I need to do. And, and uh, it's been a long journey. They've stuck with me uh, for the exception of I just joined ACK, but the rest of the guys have uh, been with me since almost the beginning, man. They've yeah. really helped me get to where I, I, I'm at. Um, if you're a reader, I always encourage read it, not just me, but read all the great reports on Saltwater Angler Magazine. Dustin, you're on there. Ooh, uh, I haven't you. written for uh, I think two weeks, three weeks, but I'll, I'll, I've already submitted an article for this next one. Oh, cool! Um, and if you want to see things from East Coast to West Coast, uh, just amazing stories. Uh, of course, Kayak Angler Magazine. Um, I, I uh, contribute to that just about on almost every um, season on that if I have yep. something to write. But uh, yeah, man. So yeah, I appreciate everything. Yeah, we need, we need to we need to collab fun. on a on a on a trophy trout. Uh, yeah, man. Article for the yeah. kayak fishing, and then also, you know, Chris Payne with a uh, Payne Payne Outdoors that does all the reviews, and you know he's starting up that kayak fishing quarterly magazine again. It'll just be online only, but uh, there'll be something else that. we can sub- submit for you know and have have some other uh, media outlets that are accessible for us, you know. And I, I'm I'm stoked you, for him starting that back up too, Chris. I, Are you I gonna be on, I'm, for I'm, I'm gonna sub, I'm gonna submit some stuff. I hope hope he gets to use it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Good, man. yeah, I'm definitely gonna take care. Of well, some if stuff you ever want to come down to our neck of the woods and maybe catch some trout. Let me know. I'll bring the cameras, dude, and we'll get some good shots so that you can put together a good article, man. I like so. to do that and then exchange a favor and you come up and we'll fish my neck of the woods and we'll kind of, you know, compare the two, you know, and see see what the difference yeah. is with that, that mid coast versus the, the coastal bend area down yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's be all good, man. Maybe we'll uh, do yeah. that, and then we'll uh, come back and maybe do another segment. We'll talk about some secret stuff. <laughs> yeah, we can do. I don't know if I'm going to talk about that. I don't. Nah, uh, I don't no, know. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. But man, you know. But we'll do that on April Fools. You'll yeah. title it saying we're going to talk about yeah. secret stuff, but we'll release that podcast on April Fools. April How Fools. About that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're blessed to have. You know, all of us like-minded anglers that, that love to target fish out of a kayak here in Texas, you know, is, is growing and leaps and bounds. You know, like we were talking earlier before we started this segment that, uh, man, you can't go across the causeway uh, in Corpus without seeing somebody on the water pretty much every day of the week, weather depending, even yeah. even not. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's it's out there. It's here to stay. I mean, it's 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 cheaper than getting a boat. <laughs> it's the ease of access. I mean, it's. It, it, and the fish are just downright fun to catch, and, Texas, and they're yeah, great. No. They're Texas great has, too. we've, we've. I think I'm confident by saying that Texas has really become the mecca for kayak fishing, man. I mean, so much to where even the east and west coasters that I've been around who have come to visit have said, "Wow, you guys have billboards of cars and kayaks." <laughs> like yeah. that's the difference. You know what I mean? And then so, all, um, all the all the crazy all the bass bass lakes we have here that the bass fishing is just insane. Oh it's, man. It's, I mean, we got a great you know, history, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything, man, from deep inshore to saltwater inshore to offshore, it's crazy what Texas has done for the industry and uh, the growth is just—it's night and day, man. It's just—it's huge. Like I, I'm, I, I thought we were gonna hit a peak like five, six, seven years ago, and it just continues to grow. I, I really don't know when it's gonna stop, but uh, it's a good so, thing, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So. Oh yeah, I am too. Glad to be on a ride too. Well, we're going to wrap up the segment here. Once again, I thank uh, Chris Castro. Check him out online, Next Level Fishing TV on YouTube. And any Instagram or anything they can follow you on, Facebook, or anything like that, they can follow you? Yeah, um, Next Level Fishing TV just across the board. Uh, Twitter, the board, Instagram, okay. All right. YouTube. Yeah. Cool deal, man. Well, all right, thanks again. We're wrapping this up. I really appreciate you being on the show. And uh, y'all tune in next time. Thank you. Thank you.